This is the story of a man who decides to avenge his wife by destroying a big company. He has billions of dollars under his nose, but he chooses revenge over everything. Let's see how he goes about it. Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we will be going through the 2017 movie, Flawless. It's time to recall, let's get started, turn on subtitles, and spoilers ahead. The movie starts and we see a girl rushing to a restaurant. Her name is Cassie and she is there to interview a woman named Laura Quinn. Laura happens to be the only woman to ever have been a manager at the London Diamond Corporation for a puff piece about the first generation of women entering the workforce. She then takes out a small box and places it on the table, revealing a huge diamond and says, I stole it. The reporter, suddenly enthralled, assumes that Quinn has been in prison for the theft all this time. After that, the scene changes and we are taken into a flashback. It is 1960 and a young woman walks into the premises of a huge building. She is the only woman out there and the rest of the employees are male, indicating how she works in a male-dominated environment. This is young Laura. In the meantime, a protest is going on against the company's director Milton and his son Ollie after the deaths of many workers because of diamonds. As the director gets to his office, he right away calls a meeting with the company's officials to discuss the matter at length. Laura is also present there. She tries to give her two cents on the situation and the options she gives to the director directly solve the problem, but Milton does not really think much of whatever she says. Before the meeting is over, the director announces that Peter Boland is going to be the new managing director of the company. Laura congratulates the man, but she is extremely annoyed and disappointed because she is the one who deserves it for being the most hardworking employee of the company, but she is often looked over, maybe because she is a woman. She's passed over for a promotion for the sixth time, despite being intellectually superior to her male co-workers. Laura, however, does not lose heart and tries to keep herself determined and motivated. As she walks in a hallway, a woman stops her and asks her to have lunch with her. Laura, however, does not feel like it and goes on to politely say no to the lunch. That day, she worked till late at night in her office. At night, a janitor comes into her office and he is really impressed by her dedication to her work and the company. His name is Hobbs. Laura is often seen working late just for the sake of the company. The next morning, Laura goes to see Milton in his office and suggests that they secretly extend their contract with the Russians if they want to keep doing business with them. She says that they cannot afford to lose them because they pay a very good price for their diamonds. Milton and the other people think that it is a good idea. When she leaves the boss's office, she runs into a man named Harold Reynolds. He is someone who has always admired Laura and has offered her to work for his company as well. As they exchange pleasantries, he tells Laura to consider his offer as he hands her his personal card. When she goes to her office, she finds a movie ticket in an envelope. That evening, she goes to the cinema, and we learn that it was the janitor, Hobbs, who put the ticket at her desk. When Laura sees him, she freaks out, but right away, he tells her that he is a happily married man. When they go into the hall, they sit together, and Laura is extremely uncomfortable. As they sit together, the janitor tells her that he has been observing the woman for a long time now. He has seen how she has been screwed over again and again in the last three years by men who are less qualified and far less deserving, always ending up getting a promotion over her. Laura does not really like sitting and discussing her career with Hobbs and gets up to walk out of there, but she is shocked and scared when the janitor tells her that she is going to get fired after she gave that great proposal to the boss about the Russians. Laura, however, decides to not believe anything until she has seen it with her own eyes. The next day, she goes to the secretary's room, she searches the room, and ends up finding her termination letter. Laura now does not have any option except for considering Harold's offer. She finds his card and they have a meeting. Much to her dismay, she learns that he cannot offer her a position and there is a conflict of interest. On top of that, he reveals that he heard from Laura's current company that she is not a competent worker. That evening, as Laura lies down being worried about her job, she dreams about getting arrested for stealing diamonds. She goes to the Greyhound Racing Competition and runs into Hobbs yet again. The janitor goes on to tell her about his plan of stealing diamonds from the company as he wants to avenge his wife. He offers her a place in the plot, stealing enough diamonds to make them rich but not enough to be noticed. Knowing she is considered old by her co-workers and has few other professional prospects, she agrees. Laura is desperate now, so she goes to his house and he tells her the detail of the plans to pull off what he wants. The man is more than confident in his plan as he has observed everything very closely in the last 16 years he has worked at the company. He reveals that his plan is to go for the vault while he is mopping. He wants that because, at that time, he's usually alone. 
Laura, however, goes on to tell him that the codes of the vaults are changed frequently and only two people at the company know about it, Milton and Eaton. Hobbs is aware that Milton keeps the code under his desk, but lately he's not been able to find it there. He then goes on to ask Laura to sneak into his office and find the code for him. He tells Laura that the diamonds he steals will be kept in a thermos. Laura then goes to the party at the boss's house. A Russian man asks her to dance, and after that, she manages to go upstairs and right away sneaks into the boss's room. She tries to look for the code but does not find anything, and as she is in there looking for the code, Milton walks into his room and opens a safe. Laura observes everything in that safe. When Milton leaves, she opens the same safe and gets her hands on the code she has been looking for. The next day, she sees Hobbs, and as she hands the code over to him, she asks him to tell her all the details of his plan. When she is walking in the hallway, she is shocked to learn that surveillance cameras are being installed in the office. She is scared to death and right away informs Hobbs about the cameras, telling him to cancel the plan. Laura then goes on to tell the janitor that there is another way to get inside the vault. Despite the fact that there are eight cameras in the basement, she reveals that only four of them are active at a time. The images cycle in 15 second intervals, which means that each image is off screen for one minute. Laura is, however, not too confident about this plan anymore as she doubts Hobbs will be able to pull it off as planned. Hobbs, however, tells her that one minute is more than enough for him to get inside the vault and come out. Laura then asks him to execute the plan as planned. They arrive at the office the next day to pull off the heist. The janitor goes to the security room and begins the countdown when the images are switching. Everything goes according to the plan, and Hobbs is now at the vault, putting in the code to have it open. He, however, takes too much time putting in the code, and the images switch. Hobbs can now be seen trying to open the vault. To his good luck, Laura calls the security room and distracts the man on watch that night. Hobbs, in the meantime, gets into the vault, and after taking the diamonds, he escapes without being spotted. The next morning, he leaves the office with his precious thermos, but is called back in to fix a toilet that has been clogged. On the other hand, when Eaton opens the vault that night, he is shocked to his core when he learns that two tons of diamonds have been stolen. Even Laura is shocked when he says two tons. Hobbs, on the other hand, goes home and pours everything out of the thermos, but there is no diamond to be found in there. Milton is pissed off at his office and calls a meeting immediately. He tells everyone that they are going to handle everything in private and warns his people not to make any of this public. He hires a man named Finch to look into the matter and does not tell anyone about him looking into the matter. Laura, on the other hand, goes to Hobbs and confronts him as she goes on to say that their plan was only to steal the diamonds that could fit in the thermos. The point of the plan was that everything would just go unnoticed. He, however, tells her to relax and stay calm. He also advises her to do everything normally and stick to the routine she's been keeping at the office for a long time. Laura then goes to the office and makes her way to Milton's room where all the senior employees are gathered. We see a man named Boyle who is a lawyer and has been sent by an anonymous person. He presents a piece of diamond to them in order to prove that his client has the diamond. Milton looks at the diamond and understands that this man is not just messing around as the diamond in front of him is one of the stolen diamonds. Laura goes to her office and Finch approaches her. He has been looking for the culprit as this could not have been made possible without an insider's help. When he is about to leave the room after having a chat with her, he asks her about Hobbs, saying that he saw her meeting and chatting with Hobbs earlier. After that, Laura goes to a senior man named Liaise and requests him to let her team up with Finch as she wants to help the company find the culprit. Finch, on the other hand, goes to the security room and sees that the company's security system is actually not very good. Everyone at the office has been trying to look for a hole in the wall as Finch believes that the thief must have made a penetration in order to take the diamonds out. On the other hand, the head of the insurance syndicate from King's Row is forced to pay the ransom, leaving him financially ruined. Quinn, having never agreed to this, now finds herself trapped. Finch, on the other hand, comes to Milton and tells him that the crime was committed by the company's employee and they got the vault code from Milton's home during the party the other night. Laura, on the other hand, meets Hobbs and tells him that no one is going to buy that big of an amount from him as only London Diamonds can afford to do that. Laura now decides that she herself is going to look for the diamonds when Hobb keeps refusing to tell her the location. Finch, on the other hand, asks Laura to help him investigate the matter. Hobbs is investigated by Finch and he manages to answer all the questions smoothly. Laura again asks him to negotiate with them, but he makes it clear that they are never going to find the diamond unless they pay the ransom. The situation escalates when the diamonds are not returned and the incident is leaked to the press. The president of London Diamond Corporation has a heart attack due to stress. Feeling concerned while out for a drink with Finch, Laura runs to the bathroom and cries uncontrollably. 
After losing her diamond earring down the drain, she gets an idea as to how the heist could have been pulled and where the diamonds could be. After Finch excuses himself, she goes down into the sewers under the company and finds Mr. Hobbs guarding a passage. He pulls a gun on her, but she finds a huge pile of diamonds at her feet. Mr. Hobbs confesses he has no interest in the diamonds or the money and just wants to ruin the head of the insurance syndicate, whose deliberate delay in covering his wife's medical expenses resulted in her death many years before. Once the deadline for the ransom is passed, resulting in the insurance head's suicide, Mr. Hobbs leaves. Laura finds the rest of the diamonds and calls Finch, claiming she followed a hunch. While there is questionable proof she was involved in the incident, Finch is unwilling to press charges against her. The company recovers the stolen property and implies to the press that the theft was just a rumor. The story returns to the present. Laura tells the reporter she resigned and shortly after received a letter from the bank in Switzerland. Mr. Hobbs apologized for involving her, needing a disgruntled employee for access to the diamond vault, and as compensation, gave her the ransom money. She tells the reporter how she spent the rest of her life donating all the unspent money to many different organizations and people in need. She has returned to London after a long absence, only to tell the story and leave this diamond she found in the sewer, calling it the last reminder of the woman she was. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.